Hi everybody and welcome to the last video in the Deep Learning for Audio with Python series. This time we're going to implement an RNN LSTM network for music genre classification. Now, we've already built a convolutional neural network that can do, can perform a music genre classification. So we're basically going to use that code as a basis and we're going to just change a few things around that make sense so to have an RNN LSTM instead of a CNN. Right. Okay. So uh, let's see like what uh, the code that we already have and we'll start from the main. And if you guys like have followed along in the series, you probably can recognize most of this code because we've already uh, done this like in previous videos. So over here, uh, the first thing that we'll do is we'll get a train validation and test splits starting from the MFCCs that we've extracted in a previous video where we pre-processed a data set for, um, the, the for the music genre classification task. Right, so once we have this data set so, uh, for train validation and test, so what, what we do next is we create the network. And uh, when we create the network over here, we have this build a model function that we'll need to change for obvious reasons, because build model in this code is going to build a CNN and we want to convert that to an RNN. Then we compile the model. Then we get like a summary of the model. Then we train the model with model.fit. Uh, then we want to plot the accuracy and error for training and validation. And we have this function here that does that. And finally, we want to evaluate the model on, on the test set to see how well it does and how capable it is to generalize. Okay, so let's get started and see like what we need to change here. So the first thing is this prepare a data sets. And here we have a couple of arguments that we pass. So 0.25 in this case indicates that we use one fourth of the data set for testing purposes. And this 0.2 over here says that of the remaining 75%, we want to use 20% of that for the validation split. Cool. But what should we change here? Well, let's go and figure that out. So here in prepared data sets, uh, we just like load uh, the data and then obviously we load both the inputs and uh, the the targets, what the Ys. And then we create train validation and test split. And here, once we have that uh, for a CNN, we had to add an extra access to the input sets. And you have it here, for example. So X train is equal to X train with this like weird, uh, like three dots, comma, np, numpy dot new access. So we are adding a third dimension. And this is because an, in a CNN, TensorFlow expects three dimensions. And in this case, the first one, the first dimension represents the number of steps that we have. So the number of uh, MFCC slices that we take. The second dimension is 13 in this case, which is the number of MFCCs that we are actually taking at each snapshot. And the third dimension is equal to the depth. And the depth with any audio data is usually just one because we have like only one dimension. Cool. So to prepare the data set for an RNN, we don't need this third dimension. So we'll just drop that. And so with that, we should have done all that's required for prepared data sets. So now let's go back to the main over here. So now uh, after uh, like this uh, line of instruction, so we should have the train validation and test splits, and now we should create the network. Now we should change another thing here. So it's the input shape. So the input shape, so the shape that the RNN expects, in this case, is, we already said that it's bi-dimensional, it's two-dimensional. So, but if you see here, uh, like in this line, you see that we have like an input shape that's equal, it's a three-dimensional, right? And we want to drop this third dimension over here, so which is like the depth, and we remain only with two dimensions. And specifically, I believe that the first dimension is equal to 130, which is the number of slices or time steps at which we take 
uh, the MFCCs, and then the second dimension is equal to 13, which is the actual coefficients that we extract from uh, or we've extracted when pre uh, when processing the data, right? And then we build the model. Perfect. Now we we need to like take a look at this because this is the the core. Uh, of like the stuff that we have to change over here. So this is the function that generates a CNN model. Obviously, we don't want a CNN model here. Rather, we want a an RNN uh, LSTM uh, model. And so I'm going to change that also here. Cool. Okay. So let's see the network to topology over here. So we have like we we just like build uh, this like sequential. Uh, model and then we have a bunch of convolutional layers and obviously we want to drop all of those convolutional layers and we'll just leave the output layer over here uh, which is a softmax a layer with 10 neurons and these 10 neurons correspond with the 10 different genres that we want to predict good okay so uh, what we need to build here is a couple of uh, LSTM layers. So we'll build two LSTM uh, layers. Right. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, that is, as usual with uh, TensorFlow and Keras, very, very simple. So we do a model.add, and then we want to add an LSTM layer. Uh, and to do that, not surprisingly, we do keras.layers.lstm. Good. Okay, so here we should specify a few things. So the first one is the number of units that we want for this LSTM layer, and this is equal to 64. So we're going to have 64 units. Then we need to specify the input shape, and the input shape is going to be equal to input shape, which is this um, uh, argument that we are passing to build model to, to this function. And then we need a an extra um, an extra argument here, which is really like a, a Boolean argument that's called a return sequences, and we need to set this to true. So what is this? Well, if you guys remember from my video on RNNs, and if you haven't watched that, you should go like uh, uh, and watch that out because like it will give you like a more profound understanding of what we are doing here. But if you remember that, we have two types of RNN uh, layers. So one is called sequence to sequence. And so basically we pass in a sequence to an RNN layer and then we get back a, a sequence. Uh, and there's another one that's called a sequence to vector. So we pass in as input a sequence. Uh, so for example, a time series, but then we don't get a sequence as an output, but just like the final step so the final prediction it's as if like in a in a melody i pass i pass like 10 notes and then i expect only like the the new notes like the prediction for the 11th notes right okay so here we want to return a sequence because we want a sequence to sequence uh layer and so we have to set a return sequences to true now, why do, why do we do that? Well, because we want to pass that sequence into the second LSTM layer. And so the second LSTM layer uh, is going to be equal to model.add, and then we pass in Keras uh, layers, LSTM. And now all we need to pass in is the number of units, which again, I'm going to set to 64. Good. So now we have two LSTM layers. So now I'm going to have another layer that's a dense layer. So in, in order to do that, so I'll do a model.add again. So I hope that by now you, you just like are able just like to predict all of these instructions because I mean, we've seen them quite a lot so far, and then they are very, very intuitive. And this is like the great thing about Keras. So it makes things and building like this networks, also very complex networks, quite easy to do. So again, we want a dense layer, so we'll do a keras.layers.dense, uh, right. 
And so here we need to pass in a couple of arguments. So the first one being the number of units, which we'll set to 64 again. And then we need to specify the activation function that we want to use. And in this case, I'm going to use recti rectified linear unit or ReLU. Good. And I want to add also another layer that's a dropout layer. And uh, I'm going to add this just like to, to avoid uh, overfitting or just like to mitigate uh, the issue of overfitting. Now, if you don't remember what dropout is, again, I have a video on that, uh, on overfitting and how to solve that. And you should like, check that out. And it should be like above. And so just like click that. Cool. Okay, so uh, so we were saying we want this dropout layer. So we'll do keras dot uh, again layers dot uh, dropout, and then we'll set the dropout probability to uh, 0.3 or 30 percent. Good. So now I believe that we have built the whole model, the whole RNN long short term memory network. Good. So just like let's revise this like very quickly. So first of all, we build, we get like this, we create this sequential uh, model. Then we add a couple of LSTM layers. The first of which is a sequence to sequence um, a layer. The second one is just a sequence to vector. And I don't need to specify that because the default is return sequences equal to false in Keras. And then I've added a dense layer and finally, uh, the dense layer uh, gets input into like the output layer, which is a softmax classifier with 10 neurons. And uh, the 10 neurons represent like the 10 different musical genres that we want to predict. Cool. So now let's go back to the um, main. And so, and we'll see that all the rest over here should be fine and good to go. So we are here, so we've just like created uh, the, the network, we've built the model, then we're gonna compile the model. And for compiling uh, the model, uh, we're gonna just use like this very same setting. So I'm gonna use Adam as the optimizer with a learning rate on 0 0.0001. And then we'll compile uh, the model and with, we'll use like as the error function, this past categorical cross entropy and as the metrics, we're going to track accuracy. Uh, I'll just like uh, run the script here and uh, see how that how that goes. Cool. Okay. So as usual, it's going to take like some time to like train the whole thing. So I'm just going to pause the video now and uh, just like get back like once we have uh, the results. So the training process has finished and we got the results here and the test accuracy is 64%, uh, which is a quite decent result given we have 10 different uh, genres. And uh, yeah, and I think like it's probably close to the result that we also got with the CNN. Good. So yeah, I guess like this is like it for this video. Now you know how to build an RNN long short term memory network, which is great. Cool. So at the same time, this is the end of the deep learning for audio with Python series. And by now, if you followed along, you should be able to like build your own models in Keras, be able to uh, process audio data, extract MFCs, perform Fourier transforms and do like a bunch more things and have an understanding like of audio data more in general. Cool. I hope you really enjoyed this uh, series. For me, it's been like a very, very nice uh, journey. And if that's the case, please consider uh, subscribing. And yeah, so uh, another thing that uh, would be great is if you could just leave, leave a comment in the comment section below and let me know what you'd like to learn next in the AI music, AI audio space. That's all for today. So I hope you enjoyed all of this. And if that's the case, I'll see you next time. Cheers.